This video is about recording accounting exchanges. It's a little bit of background first. Why do companies choose to exchange items instead of just selling one item and buying another one? Probably in most cases it's because there are tax benefits involved. Um, one example where an exchange might be helpful if a company has a large asset like uh, real estate or heavy equipment in one location and cannot or does not want to move it to another location um, they may try to work out an exchange. Okay, so when we're looking at how to record the exchanges, record some basic steps to kind of think through as you're going through this process. So a very important here is commercial substance. Does the transaction have commercial substance? What does that mean? It has commercial substance if the item that is received in the transaction has substantially different estimated future cash flows than the item given up. So what that means is that either you're exchanging something that's different from what you um, gave in return, or you're receiving an asset that has a much longer remaining life or higher quality. If the transaction does have commercial substance, we're gonna record the entire gain and loss. We don't have to worry about we're going to talk later about deferring gains, etc. If there is commercial substance, you're just going to record everything. Okay, so that is really the first thing to determine. Um, and actually, let's just go ahead and work through this, assuming that there is commercial substance, and then we'll come back to this and assume that there's not. Okay, so let's say there is commercial substance. Then we're going to need to determine our gain or loss. So here's the data we're working with these two organizations are exchanging assets and to determine the gain or loss we need to do a couple of calculations the first thing we need to do is figure out the book value of the original asset and book value is simply what did it originally cost our company and how much accumulated depreciation have we had on this asset over time so this particular asset for Atlas Corp is sitting on their books at 56,000 and for Benny Corp, we're just going to copy that over here formula. Their asset, 104 minus 46, is sitting on their books at 58,000. Well, the gain or loss on the exchange is the difference between what the fair value is, because that's how much they're actually going to get out of the asset. So we're going to start with the fair value, and then we're going to subtract how much is the value sitting on their books. So if the fair value is more, that's going to be a gain, as it is in this case. And if the fair value is less, it's going to be a loss. So I'm just going to copy that formula over here. So in both cases here, we have a gain on the exchange. Okay, so we've determined our gain or loss. Step three is let's record what we know. So in each case, we're going to record the equipment given up and the cash paid or received. So let's first look at from Atlas Corp's on their books. What would this transaction look like? Okay, well, we know we are exchanging the old asset right here. So we have to get everything related to that asset off our books because we are exchanging it, we're getting rid of it. So to get this off our books, and I'm gonna make some accounting teachers shudder with this because I'm gonna begin with a credit instead of a debit. We're going to credit the total value, original cost of our old equipment that we're giving up. And that was the 99,000, except that is a credit, not a debit over here. And then we're going to have to take off our accumulated depreciation that's related to that. And since that is a normal credit balance, we will need to debit that to take it off our books. Okay, so now we've taken off the old equipment. Now we need to record any cash we're receiving or paying. So in Atlas Corp's case, they are paying 16,000. So it's gonna, we're gonna credit cash, 16,000. All right, so we've done that step. Step number three, we've recorded our equipment given up and the cash paid or received. Step number four, if gain was cash received. All right, now this step does not apply if we have commercial substance because we're always gonna record the entire gain or loss. So we can just skip that step for now and go to step number five. We always record the loss no matter whether it has commercial substance or not, but in this case, we do record the gain as well. So we are going to record our gain on exchange of, we figured out right here, 6,000. 
And the new equipment is just making your entry balance. It's a plug figure. So to make our entry balance, we're going to add up everything on this side. And we're going to subtract what's on this side. And that's our new equipment. And how amazing. You look up here, the equipment we're receiving is the fair value of the equipment that's coming over to us. That works out rather nicely. Okay, so it's a good check figure. Let's go ahead now and record this from the perspective of Bene Corporation. So Bene Corp, here's the asset they're giving up. So once again, we're gonna go back to step number two here. We're saying this does not have commercial substance. So step number two, oh, sorry, we've already done the gain or loss. I meant we're going to step three, which is recording the equipment given up and the cash paid or received. So their old equipment that they have to take off their books, the total cost is 104,000. The depreciation they need to take off is 46,000. And in their case, they received cash. So even though it's showing as a credit here, we're going to put it on the debit side here because they got the cash. Since this has commercial substance, we're gonna skip step number four and we're gonna record the entire gain of 20,000, okay? And then we're gonna do a plug figure and if it all works out really well, it should be the fair value that they're receiving, that's 62 right over here. So we're going to add up the other side of the transaction and we're gonna subtract off the other debits to make our entry balance. There we go. Oh, and by the way, if you wanna quickly check if something balances in Excel, if you highlight all these cells, you'll notice right down here, it shows the sum 124,000. Um, and I'm not sure if that's gonna show up on the recording, but if not, I mean, it's right at the bottom of the screen that it shows up and then you can highlight the other side. And sure enough, the sum is 124,000. Nice quick check. The debits equal the credits. Okay, so those are the end journal entries if it has commercial substance. Okay, let's start over from the beginning here and we're going to make the assumption now that it lacks commercial substance. So what does that mean? That means the assets you're exchanging have similar cash flows. So in accounting terms, the earnings process isn't considered to be complete. There's nothing you should be recording a gain on here um, because you essentially have the same type of asset. So you do record a loss if you have one, but with a gain, you're going to defer part or all of that gain to the future. And when, when it talks about deferring the gain, here's how it works. The portion of the gain you defer, and we'll be calculating that in a moment, reduces the cost of your new equipment. So since the cost of your new equipment is lower, that means your depreciation over time is lower. So if you have lower depreciation or lower expenses, that increases your income. So the gain is essentially taken in little pieces with lower depreciation all the way through the life of that equipment instead of recognizing the gain up front. Okay. So let's go through this process again, assuming they do have commercial substance. So we've already done step number two. We've got our same gain or loss. We still are going to have step number three, recording the equipment given up and the cash paid or received. So we can just go through that really quick here, taking off the old equipment, taking off the old depreciation. In this case, we paid cash. Okay, uh, and now though, step four does come into play. If it's a gain, was cash received? In this case, no, we paid cash. If, if no cash is received, then the entire gain is deferred. There's gonna be no gain recorded, okay? So we have no loss to record in this case, and we're going to just balance our new, our entry with the new equipment. Um, so once again, we're gonna just add up what's on the credit side of the transaction. Since the credits are bigger than the debits at this point, we're gonna subtract off our other debit. And that is the cost of our new equipment. A quick way to check this is if you take the, the fair value of the asset you're receiving and you subtract off the amount of gain you deferred, in this case it was our full 6,000, that should be the cost of your new equipment. Okay, so that works in this case. Let's look at it from Benny Corp's perspective now. Okay, so back up to step number three. Um, we, re we are going to record the asset we're giving up, the old asset. So take off the books, the total original cost, the total depreciation that's been accumulated, and we're receiving cash of 16,000. 
Okay, so that's step number three. Now step four asks if it was a gain, was cash received? We also call this cash received boot. And then your textbooks will have a formula to figure out the recorded gain. So we do have a gain in this case, which means we can record part of that gain. So what's the formula for figuring out how much gain you can record? You start by taking the amount of boot or cash that was received. So we received 16,000 and you divide that, do some parentheses here, you divide that essentially by the total of everything, the fair value of everything you received. That includes both cash and it includes the fair value of the equipment you received. So the fair value of the equipment we received is 62,000 over here. Okay, so we received cash and we received fair value of the equipment. And the last thing we have to do, so that's our ratio, we have to multiply that ratio by the total gain that we recorded. Okay, so we go, that brings us, we can recognize out of the 20,000, we can recognize 4,102,056 cents. I'm just gonna round that to the nearest dollar for ease of calculation. And then our new equipment, once again, the entry has to balance. So, you can add up the total credits, subtract the total debits so far, and that is the balancing entry for my new equipment. Okay, to see if that makes sense, let's double check it. So our new equipment should be the fair value of what we received, so it's gonna be over here, minus the amount of gain that was deferred. So the gain that was deferred is the difference between 20,000 and 4,100, which is really close to 15,900, a couple dollars off in there. Okay, and yep, we're in the, the right ballpark there. Okay, so that is how you record exchanges of similar or dissimilar assets.